Hi guys, this is Christine with the Maylie Scott Designs. Um, I have a cute little pattern called, well, let me get it, called the Backyard Buddies. And I put out a video on the owl mug rug. A lot of people were doing that, so I wanted to help you there if you need, if you need the extra help. Now, um, the raccoon, I want to stitch him out today. He has a very layered effect. Um, there are lots of different layers, so it's not always uh, placement line tack, tack stitch and trim and then satin. It kind of jumps around to get that layered effect. Of all the mug rugs I've done, he is the most difficult to do. Um, that's because I had a real artist draw him. My little daughter, my daughter drew him. So anyway, I'm going to stitch him out today, and if you want, you can follow along. Okay, so what I've done is I hooped my... Um, stabilizer this is no show mesh stabilizer um, um, but you can get um, anything that just won't fall through you can get a really tough cutaway too um, I've stitched the first thing I did was I when I hit the button was it stitched the outline for my batting I'll lay my batting down also with the mug rug you get all kinds of instructions so this is step one when the machine stops lay the batting down now I'm gonna put my batting down step two Okay, step three says start the machine and it's going to, um, well, step two, the machine's go, going to stitch this, stitch and hold this down. Okay, as you can see, the batting is now tacked down in place. I'm on step three and the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to stitch out this little rectangle for a placement strip. If I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is your placement line for, ugh, sorry, back up. This is the placement line for this middle strip. Now we're making a seam, and when you make a seam, you put two pieces of fabric together, right sides together, and sew it. So that's what we're going to do. Step four, we are going to lay our middle piece down. And I'm actually using fabric that is not a batik, so we can see this. Okay, I put that in the little box. And that is step four. Now, the next thing I want to do is, the way my strips go, is I'm going to have two light blue, two dark blue. So my next strip is going to be this one right here. So, take these off. Now, to make a seam, you have to have right sides together. So I'm going to put right sides together. I haven't stitched anything. And I think this is the hardest part. It's so easy. People, there are short seams. People tend to go blowing through this really fast. And then they think, wait, this is all wrong. Um, but, it, you know, I've just seen this over and over. People just go blowing through. So I have two pieces of fabric, right sides together. And now I'm going to start just going to stitch a seam. This is step six. So I'm already on step six where it says stitch a quarter. Then start the machine and the machine's going to stitch a quarter inch seam. Already on step six. Don't run over your fingers, please. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to open it up. I'm going to kind of finger press it so you see I have that seam. And now I'm going to do the other side. And I am actually on. Step seven, when the machine stops, flip the strip over. I'm sorry, I'm on step eight now. Now I'm gonna lay another one and a half inch strip on here. Okay, so I got my right, two right sides together, two pieces of fabric, right sides together. I'm gonna hold my tail, hit the button, and it's gonna sew that quarter inch seam. This is step nine. Okay, now it's gone over to the other side. We like to go one side to the other side. It's a little bit better. I'm going to flip that over. This is step 10. Flip it over and finger press. I'm already on page 4. Step 10. Now this is step 11. Now on the two edges, the fabric is a little bit wider than you need it to be, and it doesn't matter because at the end you're going to trim it all out, but I'd rather have it be a little bit too long and have a really good quarter inch seam around here than be, you know, a little bit short and be scant. So that's why we cut that a little bit bigger. So we're going to lay the 1.75 by 3.5 inch strip on top of that strip right there. 
right sides together, just like the picture shows. We're going to start the machine, and it's going to stitch that quarter inch seam for us. So step 11. Okay, when the machine stops, we're going to flip that over. So you see it's, it extends past over here, but that is okay. And now it's over on the other side. This is step 12. We're going to lay uh, the one three quarters by three and a half inch strip on top of the left side with the right sides together, just like the picture shows. We're going to match the raw edges on the, the left hand side. And we're going to start the machine and stitch our quarter inch. Okay, and then I'm going to, when it stops, this is step 13, when it stops, flip that piece of fabric over, finger press it real good. Okay, now we are on step 14. What we want to do is we want to take a five and a half inch square. Here's my five and a half inch background square. And let me just, I'm going to put this in cut position so you can kind of see what we're going to do. If this were not in your embroidery machine and you wanted to make a seam here, you would put right sides together, sew your seam here, and then flip it over. So that's what we're going to do with our embroidery machine. We're going to lay our five and a half inch square right here in the edge, match your batting from side to side. We're still on step 14. Hit the button. This is step 15. Start the machine and it's going to sew that seam across. So step number 16 is when the machine stops, flip that fabric over so that the right side is showing. Finger press it up really, really good. I like to use my fingernails like a cat. <laughs> Alright, now, now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch. We're going to start the machine. This is step 17. We're going to start the machine and it's going to stitch this out, this rectangle. It's going to stitch everything so it holds it all in place. We don't want anything shifting underneath our rectangle. So you might want to just kind of hold your fingers there in front of the needle. It's going to go now to the left. Hold it over here. Be sure you move your fingers. I usually put my hand in the back and just kind of finger press the, this big green section to the back and then over. Okay, so that's 17. Everything is now is really secure and in place. Okay, now we are ready to start the little raccoon himself. And remember, I said he's very layered, so there is a lot of um, weirdness that's going to happen here, so you really have to follow the instructions. Now, the first thing that's going to stitch down is this little body right here, this little gray, um, weird shape right here. And you can see that's kind of a weird shape, so that's his little body. And you also notice that I haven't really changed my thread at all since I've been doing this because right now thread has not mattered at all because um, um, even though your machine is telling you to put in purple thread, put in pink thread, I have to change the thread. I have to program um, a thread change in order to make these home machines start stop when I want them to stop. So that's why you have all these thread change colors, but I'm still using the same gray that I started with. So I'm going to hold my tail here. I'm going to start my machine, and we're going to stitch this weird little outline shape, which is going to be the placement line for the raccoon's body. Okay, I am on step 19 now, if you're following along with the instructions, and let me just show you what we got here, if I can get in there. Oh, sometimes the lights on these machines. You see the little weird shape? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my square. I had to cut, um, I think it was a three inch square of gray fabric. I'm going to take my square. One of these days I'll learn which way is in and which way is out on this camera. And then I'm just going to lay that right over these placement lines. I'm just going to lay the square right over. It's plenty big. I'm going to start the machine. And what it's going to do is it's going to stitch some little stitches to hold this piece of fabric down in place. So you see, you can see that little weird shape. Now, you want to trim all this extra fabric away. And what I usually do is I usually take the hoop out and put it on a table. I'm going to see if I can't just trim it while it's right here. I can't do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to actually take my hoop out. I'm going to lay this on a flat surface. All this is going to stay inside the hoop. I'm not going to take anything out of the hoop. I'm just going to remove my hoop from the machine. 
And I cut my bobbin thread. Sometimes I clean up my bobbin at this point, but I'm not gonna do this today. I'm gonna lay it on a flat surface. I'm gonna trim and I'll be right back. I also want you to see how close I cut to my stitch line. Okay, <clears throat> now in your instructions, this is the first time is that we're, I'm asking you to change thread, and I'm asking you to change to a gray, and it's gonna stitch this gray outline right here and right here, or let me, the outside of the raccoon right here and right here, and then we're gonna change to a white and it's gonna stitch the belly, okay? Okay, so I changed my thread. I'm gonna start the machine. And the dog is barking. Good night. Here we go. Here we go. Angel, stop it. Okay, so you can see that it stitched the satin on oops, satin on this side and then the satin stitch on that side. It did not stitch the satin on the top and the bottom. That's why I'm talking about the layering because as you can see, his little mouth is, comes over the body and the tail goes over the body. So we don't want to stitch satin stitches on top of satin stitches. That would just be a recipe for disaster. So let me cut my thread. I'm going to stop the machine. I'm going to change my thread to white. We're still on step 22, so change your thread to white. Okay, sometimes people write in and ask me what kind of needle I use. Just to let you know, right now I'm using a Top Stitch 90. Um, because I am going through lots of layers, I want to have a needle that can hold up to that. So this is a Top Stitch 90 needle. Alright, I'm going to hold my tail and it's going to stitch my belly now. Still on step 22. So now we have the raccoon's stomach. Yeah, let's see if we can zoom out a bit. Oops. So we have the raccoon's body and his little tummy has just been stitched out. Now the next thing is going to be the placement for the tail. And most of the tail is white. It's white fabric and then it's going to have gray thread that's going to give it that um, fuzzy look. Alright, so I am now on step 23. We're going to start the machine. We don't have to change the thread because we can just keep white thread in there for right now. And it's going to stitch a placement line much like this for the tail. Okay, it's kind of maybe hard for you guys to see, so I can, but the tail is right here. It's kind of a little puffy. I'm going to lay my fabric. I'm on now step 24. Lay the tail fabric over the placement. That is my white, and yeah, okay, make sure I got right sides up. And I'm going to start my machine again, and it's going to tack that fabric down in place. Okay, step 25. I'm on step 25 now, and it says to remove the hoop from the machine like we did before, just like we did before, and we're going to trim away all that excess fabric, and when we're done, we're going to put everything back into the machine. So, again, I'm not taking the fabric out, I'm just taking the hoop out, and I'm going to go take it over to the table, and I'm going to trim all this extra fabric away. So, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm back. You can see that I have trimmed out my tail. I am now on step 26. It says to change the thread to gray. I already did that while the camera was off. The machine is now going to stitch all this fuzzy stuff around the tail. And it's going to take six minutes. So I'm going to start this and I'm going to get up and go do something else and uh, turn the camera off and then we'll show you that when it's done. So let me just get started. Okay, so we're back. It's, it's been six minutes. Wasn't that the fastest six minutes of your life? And you see it's stitched out all the little fuzzies around the tail to make it look fuzzy. I'm on step 27. It says change thread to dark gray for the eye area. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing because the gray, the eye area, this dark gray eye area is actually this part right here, okay? So it's going to stitch an outline, a placement line for this section right here. And that's going to be where you're going to put your dark gray fabric. So let's go ahead and stitch that. Okay. And I always think that this is where it looks kind of confusing to me. I mean, if it, because now I've got this area that I just stitched, but I also have his nose. But we're working right now on this area right here, um, the dark gray area for the little raccoons eyes right here. Okay, so this is step 26, 28. I'm going to lay my dark fabric over and you can see my fabric has flowers on it and leaves and it really doesn't matter because it's such a tiny area it won't show up. So 
So I'm going to lay that over those placement stitches. I'm going to hit my hit my button, and it's going to tack that fabric down. Okay. The machine's going to stop, and as I've done before, I'm going to remove the hoop, and I'm going to start trimming away all this extra fabric away from, you know, real close to the stitches. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll be right back. I've trimmed real close to my stitches, and normally on a simple applique, what would happen is it would do a satin stitch around the raccoon. But let me show you. I want to do the eyebrows next because the satin stitch, as you can see, I want it to go over the eyebrows. And again, I don't want to stitch a satin stitch on top of a satin stitch. So I want that white fabric tucked underneath the satin stitches. So that's what's going to stitch out next is little white eyebrows right here. And that is fabric. So I'm going to start the machine again. You can see I still have no nose. There is no nose. That sounds funny. No nose. Um, okay, I'm going to start the machine and it's going to stitch our little eyebrows. This is step number 30. Okay, step number 31. We're going to lay the fabric. I'm actually going to change the thread to white because I, I'm using white fabric now. And I don't want to have uh, gray fabric, gray thread on top of white fabric. It just doesn't seem, and it does say in the instructions. Go ahead and change your thread to white. We're on step 31. I'll lay that fabric over. I'm going to start the machine and it's going to tack that fabric down in place. Okay, and just as we've done before, I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine, take it over to a flat surface. I'm going to trim away the excess fabric. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'll be right back. Shoot, I just realized that I did not have my camera on. It wasn't recording. So let me just tell you what we're doing. I'm on step 32. Um, I've changed my thread to a medium gray that will match this, this little face here. Um, and I'm going to start the machine and it's going to stitch this satin stitch all along here and all along here. Okay, and then the machine's going to stop. So because this takes four minutes to do this, um, actually it's just two more minutes now, um, I'm going to turn the camera off for real this time and um, we'll let it finish stitching out. Okay, so you can see it's stitched out all the satin stitch. Um, I'm still on step 32. The machine will stop. It will stitch a placement stitch for the nose. we got to get that nose down. So here's the placement stitch that just stitched out for the nose. Now we're going to change the thread to white, which I have just about done. And we're going to get a piece of white fabric um, and use it for the nose. Okay, so still on step 30. Two, I'm going to lay the white fabric down over the nose. I'm gonna, I've got my white thread in. I'm gonna hit the button. It's going to stitch, tack down the nose area. And then just as I did before, when the machine stops, I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine and trim away the excess fabric. Okay, so we're back. We've, I've trimmed out the fabric. Um, I am now on step 34. I want to change my thread to this this color gray. It's a, the I say medium gray in the in the instructions, but it's basically the same gray you use for the tail and the body, because this is part of his body. And we're going to it's going to do a um, on step 34. It's going to do a uh, um, a placement stitch first, and then it's going to tack it, and then we'll lay fabric over it. Okay, you can see where the, I hope, where the uh, machine did the tack down. It went down here to the nose. Um, and now we're going to lay the fabric over and tack that down in place. We're still on step 34. Okay, so I'm going to turn machine off. I'm going to trim all this excess fabric away. I'm going to turn the machine off while I do that. And then I'll return it to the hoop. That's step 35. Alright, I am back on I'm um, step number 36. You want to change your thread to white because what's going to stitch out now are the little, there's a white section of the ears. So I've got my white thread in. I've trimmed all this out and here we go. Alright, we're still on step 36. You can, okay, so we finished satin stitching the ears. Now what we're going to do is 
we're going to change the thread to gray. I'm still on step 36. Change it to gray. It's going to set and stitch the top of his head and this section of the nose. Here we go. Okay, so we've stitched up the top of the head. We've stitched up the nose. It did the set and stitch around the nose. Now we're on step 37. We're going to change our thread to black for the eyes and the nose. We're going to do the little beady eyes and a little bitty beady nose. You could do charcoal gray if you wanted. I'm going to just go with a black black. And I've already got changed my thread color and I'm going to hit go. This is going to take about two minutes. All right, after your eyes and nose have stitched, you're going to have a few little jump stitches in there. You'll probably want to get those out of the way. You're going to change your thread to white. I've already changed my thread to white. And what's going to happen next is it's going to stitch the eyebrows and the nose. I can't remember. I think it does the nose first and then it's going to do the eyebrows. Oops, he went out of, out of the picture. Okay, so we're done with that. And we are now on step uh, 39. And let me just bring him back up so we can kind of see him. You notice how my machine shifted over to this, this area. Let me pull out some more. It shifted over to this area. What's going to happen next is we're going to change our thread color to a green. And then we're going to, um, it's going to stitch an outline placement stitch for both. All right, we're back. I got green thread. I'm going to hit the button. Step 39. Okay, so now I'm on step, let's see, we are on step 40. We're going to lay the leaf fabric over these placement lines. And there we go. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start the machine. I guess it helps stop the thread up on top of the fabric, doesn't it? Not underneath it. We're going to start the machine again. It's going to tack that fabric down. Okay, I think here you can kind of see the tack down stitches um, on the fabric. It's a little puffy. I'm going to trim all this excess fabric away. This is Take your time with this because you're going in all these little valleys and um, it's a little time consuming, but um, you'll, you'll, t you'll do it. I know you can do it. All right, we are at the bottom of step 41. We're going to start our machine again and the machine is going to stitch the set and stitches around the leaves. This is going to take 11 minutes, so we're going to turn the camera off. I'm not going to sit here and watch it for 11 minutes. Alright guys, we're almost there. Just keep your thread color the same, green or whatever. We're going to stitch um, a placement line for the back, for the backing fabric. Really, you don't even have to do this step. You can skip it if you want, but hey, it's in there, so we're going to do it. Um, because when you flip it out, when you flip the hoop over, you can see where the outline is anyway. But we'll, we'll go ahead and stitch the line out since it's in the instructions. All right, so here we go. So step 42. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to remove the whole thing from the hoop. Go ahead, do not take it out of the hoop. Even though it looks like it's finished, leave everything in the hoop. We're going to take it out. You're going to laugh at this. Okay, so here I've taken it out. I'm going to flip it over. Let me just get my camera here. Okay, so I have a little Tupperware here, and um, I, call, I had to label it the 505 Spray Box Sticky because people started using it around here, and it is very sticky. I drop my backing fabric into it, take my 505 spray, and I just kind of spray my backing. And I do this inside a box because I don't want to get all that sticky everywhere. I hate sticky. I hate sticky kids. I hate anything sticky. Um, and I don't want my sewing machine sticky. So here's my little mug rug. You can see my placement oh, is sticky now. I don't like sticky. And I'm just going to lay that over so it pretty much covers that whole mug rug. And I'm kind of pressing it down. But you see the whole thing. Now I'm going to take it. And you, and you can see on the other side, you can see that it has covered the whole area very nicely the way um, you know it should. So now I'm going to go back to the machine and I'm going to stitch it down. It's going to stitch right along here, this inside uh, line, just to hold it in place. Okay, so I got it back in the machine. Let me grab my tail and hit the button. Now, all these big companies that do all these 
embroidery parties that are way bigger than me, um, they always tell you to, um, you know, use tape on the back, or a lot of them will tell you to use tape on the back. When you have a home machine like this, you don't want to use tape on the back because their machines, they're, they don't have a bobbin like ours have. Oh, darn, I'm out of bobbin. Go figure. Hold on. Change my bobbin. Come on, get out of there. Uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. Always a good thing to back up. Anyway, I was saying, because you, the professional machines, those um, 10 needles, they don't, and 10 needles, 16 needles, six, you know, those big machines that the commercial designers and stuff use, they don't have a bottom to them. So th they can put tape on the bottom to hold that backing in place and it won't affect their machine. But you see how mine slides all over this thing. What happens is with the tape is it starts curling and getting stuck and then all this up here is uh, just not uh, stitching out correctly. And, you know, who wants tape all over their really nice, expensive embroidery machine? Okay, so there you have it. Mug rug done.